Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake, aka Tag, and today we're back again with a very easy to play Lava Hound Miner deck. A ton of people in the meta right now are running Bridge Spam and Sparky, and you can just damage it down from the air with the Night Witch Bats, the Mega Minion, and the Baby Dragon. And you have a lot of Poison and Fireball bait with the Night Witch and also the Barbarians. And if you're facing a Magic Archer, you get a plus two positive elixir trade with the Barbarian Barrel. One of the most common decks in the game right now is going to be that Ice Wizard, Graveyard Poison, and because you have Poison and Barbarians and Night Witch, it's one of the easiest matchups in the game for you. So let's go jump jump straight into some games and assert some dominance with the current best Lava Hound deck in Clash Royale. And I am so excited to announce that today's video will be sponsored by Might and Magic Era of Chaos. Era of Chaos is an in-depth strategy game that is very fun from the start, but it's very difficult to master, so you're never going to get bored. To play Era of Chaos at the highest level, you have to have a perfect understanding of what every single spell hero and unit does. I could go on and on talking about grid formation and team composition so you guys can learn how to build the best possible team. I mean, there are just so many different layers of strategy in Era of Chaos to always keep you entertained. And there's seven types of unique game modes in Era of Chaos, so no matter what you enjoy in a mobile game, Era of Chaos has got you covered. And when you guys are playing through the immersive campaign, building an army and organizing it to send it out into battle, be aware that there's over 80 different creatures that you guys can face and use, and there's over 20 heroes that you guys can collect and customize to build the best possible team. The campaign and the storyline are incredibly immersive too. And if that's not for you and you guys want to fight in some more PvP battles, well, we got you covered with the Clan vs. Clan leaderboards. And you can also share gifts with your friends and steal resources from your enemies. If you somehow haven't played Era of Chaos already, Already, what are you waiting for? Go down below in the description, click that special link, and download today for free to join in on the best new strategy game on mobile. I dislike starting off the game with Miner, but I really can't wait till Double Elixir, so we're gonna start our Miner now. Just in case he's got a Golem deck, I don't wanna get Double Elixir and find out, hey, it's gonna go, go Golem, same lane as our Lava Hound. That'd be really bad. So we're gonna go Lava Hound now, expecting to pack a deck, and he's actually gonna have a Giant. So this is way better for me, because now I can just go in for. Barbarians right on top and then Barb Barrel right on top of the skeletons as they accumulate. I think that we're going to do a ton of damage to his tower on the counter push and we might lose our tower, but it's still fine. I'm very confident with this because he overcommitted with a graveyard and a giant and a lecture wizard. So that means he probably doesn't have anything on defense right now. I want to go for a baby dragon just because it's going to be in the air opposed to the night witch, which won't. So I also want to go in for a miner as well because we know that we're going to be able to kill the baby dragon with the pups, but I don't want the pups to be hit by the tower here. So this is what we wanted to have happen. The counter push was going to be unreal. He has no answer to the baby dragon because it's floating in the air unless he is going to go drop like a fireball on it, which wouldn't really make too much sense at this point since it's already taken the tower, right? So I can go and start another Lava Hound on the left-hand side, and I'm pretty confident in this matchup. The one thing that we do have to be fearsome of or worried about is the potential of him giant graveyarding the king. Yeah, he's going to graveyard here probably. Oh, whoa, okay. Giant Graveyard Sparky. Well, it's not going to hit all the Barbarians. Some of them stay alive. And then I think I can go in for a Mega Minion to kill the Sparky because one of the other Barbs should still stay alive. I'm thinking that the Sparky does not get hit on our tower. I could be wrong, but I'm feeling like it doesn't. And at this point, I, I think we've won this game if he doesn't go in for a Giant Graveyard on the King. If he goes Giant Graveyard on the King, we could be in a little bit of trouble. But I'm going to go in for a Baby Dragon left-hand side. He's just going to go for Barb Barrel, Baby Dragon. doesn't really matter too, too much. We definitely want to go in for a Night Witch and then follow up with a Lava Hound right in front of our Baby Dragon. Because our Baby Dragon will win the battle at the river. And then it will stay behind our uh, Lava Hound. And then he's forced to go in for probably another Graveyard. I honestly rather just go in for Barbarians at the river and kill that. Because we have King Tower shooting down the Skeleton. So that Graveyard isn't even going to matter. So if you don't have to respond to a Graveyard, don't do it. So, I don't want to drop a 4 Elixir Poison for no reason whatsoever when we have this big of a counter push coming at him. We can go Baby Dragon right on top. A lot of the Barbarians are still alive. I think that the Night Witch is going to get hit, unfortunately. But that is still going to be Tower, guys. And then we can go for a Lava Hound and assert Dominance and go for the 3 Crown. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you. And this is a very easy game. This guy was actually pretty okay, too. Definitely running a funky deck. I haven't seen anyone running a... Graveyard Sparky Giant deck ever. I totally expected Pekka after we saw the Lecture Wizard, but it simply wasn't it, man. He was very angry, too. <laughs> Just kept spamming those angry faces, man. Go for a Barb Barrel here, see what's up, see what's happening. This dude is going to go and cycle Princess of the River, so we're forced to go and drop our Mega Minion. Obviously, the Mega Minion will be able to deny any damage from the Spear Goblin and the Goblin on the right, but it's not going to get a single hit on the right, so... Just have to chill and relax and see what he's got. If he wants to rocket this Baby Dragon, it doesn't matter to me at all. That would actually be really great. I don't think he will do it, though. He's probably going to drop a Valkyrie or a Knight, depending on what he has with the deck. 
And I want to go in for a Night Witch, same lane. He's going to have Rascals. Okay, so he's going to have Rascals and probably Prince Variation. I thought it might be the standard log bait, but it's not going to be that. I could go in... Okay, we're going to go Barbarians. I was going to say, I could go for a Lava Hound in front of this, but Barbarians is definitely better because it's going to be able to kill the Bandit and it's going to be able to aid our endeavors with the Night Witch. So I could go for a Miner here, but the Bats are just kind of not going to do much for me, so it's not worth it really. Rather conserve Elixir. Maybe go in for a Miner on the left so the Prince doesn't go towards it. And then we can go Mega Minion and Bard Barrel here. I don't really like doing this, but I have to just so the Prince doesn't connect to our tower. And I expect him to go in for a Goblin Barrel on the left, so let's just do that. Drop our Baby Dragon Pronto. Huh, he didn't go for Goblin Barrel. Our Bard Barrel's out of cycle and he's not going in for it. That's really nutty, man. I guess he is forced to defend here. If he goes in for the bar Goblin Barrel here, we'll go in for Barbarians. I think he is going to, so yep. So that was really good. Holding my Elixir, making sure that I knew that my opponent was going to go in for Goblin Barrel at that point because he had the Thick Boy still alive. I didn't have Bard Barrel in cycle. I don't think he noticed that, to be honest. Otherwise, I think he would apply a lot more aggression. I could Miner, but it just doesn't seem worth it here. I'd rather start a Lava Hound. That's how my big pushes start. Okay, can't do that right now because he's going to drop a Prince. And we need to be able to kill this Princess. Most likely, this guy is going to go in for a Goblin Gang right on top. So I'd rather go in for a Mega Minion instead of Bard Barreling that. I don't want to save my Bard Barrel anyway. So I think we probably want to go in for a Miner with these Bats here. And then the Goblin Gang, Sun, ah, oh, Split. Very well played on his end. We definitely want to poison that though. That's so much elixir. Rascals are just going to die. It does not matter anymore. Since we have Bard Barrel, we can defend against anything. So we just go for Barbarians right on top of the spam with the Prince. And we can Bard Barrel here. I just was a little bit cautious against this Bandit. Did not want that thing to dash anywhere. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a little bit of time before I go in for my Miner. I want him to drop more cards so then he doesn't have Goblin Gang or Prince in Cycle to stop us. So I'm going to go for the Miner now. I think that that's going to be good because now he just dropped his Rascals. There's no way that he can stop this. Going for a Spicy Poison as well. And this game looks to be over here. Oh, I didn't hit the Rascals. Okay, no wonder he's BMing. <laughs> I don't think it even matters, dude. If, even if I miss the Rascals here, I think we just hardcore win this matchup. That's so Mimi. Make a huge misplay like that and it doesn't matter at all. We just go for a Bard Barrel here. The Barbarians are going to be able to stomp all over this Prince. And this guy is so frustrated right now. We played this so poorly, it did not matter in the slightest. That poison was laughable, man. So we're going to be able to go in for a Miner here, poison this out, and walk with a W. So if your opponent's got Bomb Tower or Log Bait or Mortar, a lot of times they just don't have answers to you at all. If they don't have Minion Horde, they can't really defend you at all. So GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. If their buildings don't do anything, or if they don't have a building, it's pretty much an automatic win. We'll go Mega Minion here since he's going to go for a Bard Barrel, and we'll see what's up. I don't really want to go for a Lava Hound in front of that. I'd just rather chill and see what he's got before we make any big plays here. So we see Baby Dragon. I don't know what this could be. Baby Dragon Knight. Okay, never mind. Never mind, guys. It's just going to be Graveyard. He's 100% going to slap down a Graveyard right in front of this Knight. And he's going to have a good time. He's going to try to have a good time. He's not going to actually have a good time anymore. We're going to go in for a Lava Hound in front. He's not going to get any damage on top of this Night Witch. The Bats will be able to kill the Baby Dragon. And we are having a very good time now. <laughs> I, don't many ha I don't know how many times I can say that, but we're going to stop saying good time now. He is going to be all messed up when we go in for more Lava Hounds plus Miners on top of the Ice Wizard. I can go in for a Lava Hound here and play pretty aggressive because we were able to tank for the Night Witch and it was a pretty nice counter push. So if I'm able to tank for the Night Witch and make sure it doesn't take any damage, then he's not going to be able to kill that Night Witch easily. And I went in for a Poison because he's going to go in for a Graveyard here and then he doesn't have Poison and then we can just go Barbarians and laugh at him. So I hope he Graveyards, it would be really bad. He's going to do it. Yep, there it is. So I can just go in for the Barbarians, and then I could Bard Barrel, or I could just chill. It doesn't really matter. I have to cycle one more card to get to Lava Hound, but look at how the much damage I'm taking. Absolutely nothing, right? So we can go for a Night Wish and then Lava Hound at the river if I really want to, because he just went in for a Knight plus Graveyard. That's eight Elixir. I drop Barbarians. He has to respond to them too, and that's five Elixir. So plus three Elixir trade and something he has to respond to. Heck yeah, we take those out here. He doesn't respond to those Barbarians. That'd be pretty funny. He drops Bomb Tower, which is not going to be very good for him here. I could go in for a Poison, because then I'm going to be able to kill the Bomb Tower a little bit quicker, and we definitely do kill the Ice Wizard with one duration of Poison, so that's really nice. Then I can go in for a Miner, and it looks like he's going to try to Tornado everything into the Death Bomb, but it's not going to matter. I think that the Baby Dragon is going to latch on top of the Miner, so then the Pups just thrive on the Tower, and that is going to be Tower already. So if you're running Graveyard, and you play against me, that's running Lava Hound Poison with Barbarians, and you go in for a Graveyard and Single Elixir, you automatically lose the game. And Double Elixir, as you guys just saw, 
It doesn't really matter. My barbarians weather through the storm. They stay alive, and your poison doesn't do too much. Does not kill it quick enough. So yes, you get chip damage, but you don't take my tower. It's a reliable defense. So even if I don't have poison and cycle, I am still thriving. The game is still mine. If you guys hate playing against this graveyard deck, and you ins are sick and tired of losing against it, this is the deck for you. I mean, I would say 95% of the meta is this deck in particular, either with Tombstone or it's going to be Bond Tower. And if you want to hard counter it, this is going to be it. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. One minor hit does 64, there's towers at 63. Need one minor hit, or I need a poison. You didn't guess it, so that's GG. Peace out, Girl Scout, and good luck in the rest of your grand challenge. He was a pretty good player, but it didn't matter. Our deck hard counters it, even though he's got Ice Wizard, Tornado, Baby Dragon, and Poison. He doesn't break through with his graveyard at any point, so it doesn't matter at all. All right, here we go, guys. We got a game against Noah. I'm going to go for a Barbarian Barrel to kick open the game, see what's up. I really don't like going for Miners to start open the game if I don't have to, just because if he's got Battle Healer, we could have been in for a World of Pain because he just heals up the Miner damage and then gets counter pushed right after. So that's great that he does not have that. He probably has a Log Bait, to be honest. Could go for a Night Witch in the right-hand side. Okay. So he's going to go in for Dark Goblin. I don't care about that. It's going to get... No damage, actually. I thought I was going to be able to kill the Baby Dragon before my Baby Dragon got that last hit off. But, you know, we're thriving. We're doing super well here. If I'm able to kill this... Yeah, there's no way. He doesn't have Elixir. After dropping the Rascals, you don't have Elixir for Goblin Gang or anything, really. Oh, he did have Elixir for Prince. Just didn't guess it correctly. I stand corrected. Why would he do that, though? Because he's going to lose the tower on the other side. Right? Doesn't he just take a ton of damage for that? Seems like a really bad play. I thought that he would have to spend Elixir here. And then he just didn't. He just decided, you know what, Jake? I want to lose my tower. This is crazy. So he decided to defend the princess that might try to give him value there. Like, it's not a guarantee, right? It's not a guarantee that that princess gives you value at all. The reason is, if the princess stays alive, you're fine. But if I catch the princess like I did, you waste five Elixir with a prince. And then you have nothing to defend the other side. So it was a really bad decision on his end. And since he's running log bait, I think it's an automatic win again. This is a very easy matchup for me because I brought Barbarians. I can just poison here even if you catch it. He made a really good play there. Does it matter? Absolutely not. So <laughs> that's the good thing here, man. Even if they make good plays, even if they outplay me in specific situations, I think I just hardcore win this matchup. All I have to do is start off a Lava Hound whenever he goes in for a princess in the back or something. And then we're doing a really good job of uh, keeping ahead. I don't want to go in for a, a Lava Hound when he could spam me really aggressively with the Goblin Gang Prince. So I just waited on that. We can go in for a Night Witch now, and then we can go in for... Yeah, I want to go for Barbarians. I think that's the wave. Just playing defensive here and then cycling like a minor control deck is pretty nice as well. Just because I have so many answers to his bridge spam. Does not matter, man. You go for a minor here and then I can go in for a poison. And I should be able to hit almost everything. I don't think I'm able to hit one of the girl rascals, but it's still getting clipped by the baby dragon, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to wait for the barbarians because I want him to go drop a uh, goblin barrel, and he did anyway. Great stuff because now we're able to hit them. If I dropped it early, he would have dropped the goblin barrel on the back, and then I wouldn't have been able to hit them. So that's why I waited the last possible second. We totally debated him here. And notice how I'm just playing this like a minor control deck when I need to. Just go in for a minor and then poison immediately. This is going to drop Goblin Gang, and then the game should be over. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you, and good luck in the rest of your grand challenge. Well, maybe the game's not over. Maybe I need, like, one more hit. It doesn't really matter, though. We're just going for a minor and walk with the Fat W, so... Now he's actually spamming pretty hard, but I think that the Dark Goblin just dies, and then we get one Poison Tick, and then the game is over, so... Now he's actually getting a lot of value there with the Princesses, but still didn't really matter. Pleasure playing against you. I think he actually played better than me. The deck matchup is just so heavily in my favor. It doesn't matter at all. I played it like a minor control deck. Never dropped my Lava Hounds whenever he had an opportunity to spam me with like a Prince and Goblin Gang on the opposite side. Because if you do that and you don't have Elixir to defend that, you're just going to lose your tower. And a tower trade is really, really bad when you have full control of the matchup. So we're going to start off the game with Lava Hound first play. It's actually not a bad play when you're running Barbarians and Barbaril is very good with Lava Clone as the starting play to start Lava Hound in the back. It's actually a, used to be a very bad play when you're running more control oriented decks but these games are so offensive right now that it's a pretty good play especially if they go pack opposite lane we're going to be thriving we can just go in for barbarians here and we should be able to shut this down if i had uh i had mega minion that'd be nice but we're just going to go barbaral and then mega minion now look at how much damage we're getting on the other side we're just going to be able to kill his magic archer with a barbaral and i think the game is pretty much over already Man, we're just getting good matchup after good matchup after good matchup. 
I think this deck is kind of busted in the meta. I'm not even doing anything special, as you guys saw. I made a lot of misplays in the last game. This game, I just dropped a Barb on top of a Magic Archer, Herp Derp, very easy to do. And you just walk away with the Ws very easily just because of the matchups you get. Nice to see it, you know? He's going to go P.E.K.K.A. again, opposite lane of us probably. He doesn't really want to go same lane because we just kill everything behind the P.E.K.K.A. and the P.E.K.K.A. And then all of our units go behind the Lava Hound. And then the push is even bigger for us. So if he's smart, he always goes opposite lane. So I need a Miner here just to make sure that we're going to be able to defend. Notice where I dropped my Miner. This is something that's really, really, really important. I can't stress that enough. I hope you guys realized how many times I said really. Reason is, I dropped it super, super close. Wherever you drop your Miner, it's going to take longer the further you drop it away from your tower. So if I drop my Miner really far away, it's not going to be... Uh, not gonna be there for a while, but if I drop it right here, it gets there super quickly. So if You guys didn't know that well now, you know it You got to incorporate that into your games if you want to win more games We're gonna go for a barbarian barrel We're gonna go in for a night witch and we should be able to be able yeah, I think that's not gonna get damage, right? He even zaps. Okay, so that was that was looking a little bit sketchy after the zap, but doesn't matter We have a night witch lava hound push and he's already saying GG He knows it's over because he doesn't have any defense against the bats as soon as we minor and then he's going to go in for a bandit to snipe the miner and try to keep everything alive, but it doesn't matter in reality. I can just go for a mega minion to go and kill the bandit so he doesn't get counter push. And it looks like the bandit actually will get counter push, but it's just going to be walking towards us, so it's not the worst thing in the world. He does end up taking a tower, which is interesting. I totally wasn't expecting that one, Chief. Still have matchup advantage, so I'm not too worried. I know that in the minions matchup, our baby dragon is much, much better. But since we have Bard Barrel, it's not going to be that big of an issue against any Magic Archer player. So we can just go in for a Baby Dragon, wait for him to spam a little bit more. Go in for Barbarians here. I just want to probably, yeah, probably just go in for Barbarian Barrel and Miner here and then wait for the, uh, the Bandit so then we can poison everything because we know he's going to stop uh, us from killing Electro and he's going to clump up a lot of units next to it. So the poison value is obvious. I can, instead of spamming a Lava Hound here, you just keep starting more pushes. That's how you win this game. So we go for another Lava Hound in the back. His Magic Archer is just going, contemplating life, why it's going on the other side. <laughs> and then his Electro goes right into a Lava Hound instead of hitting our tower, really. So, it's nice. We can go for a Baby Dragon and stockpile a lot of stuff that does not... Okay, you know what? We can just go Barbarians here. And going for a Mega Minion. So he's going to try to 3-crown me. That's exactly what I would have done if I was him. That was a really nice play on his end, but... He's going to lose his tower now, so all we have to do is defend the virginity. Go in for a Night Witch, go in for a Miner if we need to, but I don't think we do. I think we just hard chill with our defensive structure of air units. And then uh, go in for a Poison with the Lava Hound popping, Baby Dragon locking on the tower. The game is effectively over. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Very good P.E.K.K.A. player. But as you guys saw, it just doesn't matter. Later in a GC against a great player. Easiest win of my life just because matchup, man.